thank you for taking the interview with us. So the venture capital industry has undergone a lot of change and challenging times recently. As you look ahead, how will we see get through and what opportunities ahead? Well, we are in unprecedented times. Rising interest rates, rising inflation, rising geopolitical tensions. And over the past decade, we've seen easy capital. Right? It flew into the market and companies blitzscaled and there was a lot of inefficient use of capital. However, the times are already changing. Right? Capital is harder to get. We're already, according to pitch book, we are already seeing capital funding drop by more than 30% year on year, and that trend continues. The good part is VCs are doing more due diligence. Processes are taking longer. So what will historically take about two weeks is now taking more than three months. So I think this is a healthy change for the venture capital industry. And it's a healthy change to create a, a good foundation for the innovative landscape to be sustainable. So here at Sentinel, we are focused on open computing. So our whole thesis is built around that. What is open computing? Open computing, the essence of it revolves around the interoperability and compatibility across systems and creation, the creating the open standards for companies to be built on. So that will make it easier for companies to integrate both their hardware and software stacks. And in so doing, they would be able to scale more quickly, more effectively, and hopefully in a safer fashion. You're not just an investor, but you've also been a startup founder. What perspective does that bring to deal sourcing and deal diligence? Yes, I previously founded a consumer fintech company, and it, it had its own challenges, right? So customer acquisition costs was high, revenues was transient because customers were not loyal, and the compliance burden was through the roof. So because of that whole experience, that gave me a new perspective. It, now as an investor, I focus a lot on scalable technologies and business models. Uh, it's one thing to have a great idea, but if you are just applicable to a very small niche market, or you're not able to scale efficiently with the capital you have, there is a long-term question on the viability of the company. So, because if you think across time, how many companies out there that has split scaled eventually became profitable? So now, having been through both the founder journey and the investor journey, uh, it has allowed me to better appreciate the risks and rewards of building a company from ground up. It has allowed me to understand how to build scalable technologies and business models. And most importantly, it has allowed me to empathize with founders out there. I think building a company is not easy. It has a lot of challenges. That's why it's important to understand the motivations, the vision that the founders have for their company and also their commitment to the success of the company. We are, see we are seeing a lot of attention now on technologies such as AI at Sentinel Global, where you focused on transformational technologies. What is your approach to the shiny new ball of technologies and investment hype cycles? Yes, we are investing in what we deem as transformational technology that will power the next generation of enterprises. But we are also aware of the hype cycles. That's why here at Sentinel, what we do, we take a two-pronged approach. Firstly, we invest prudently. We do a thorough evaluation of each deal that we embark upon. So we assess the market opportunity we assess the stage that the company's development is at, whether it's on the team, product tech, etc. And we also assess the long-term value that the company brings to the table. So take for example, for one of our recent deals, we actually did quite a lot. We did in-house research. We had Josh, one of uh, our research analysts, who was previously a deep research analyst at a lending uh, company. He dived and tested the product 
And we also have markers who have successfully scaled companies globally and gotten regulatory approvals across multiple jurisdictions to assess the, uh, the license applications of the, the company that we were uh, diving into. And we also took the initiative to call potential customers to find out what the real uh, pain points are and whether or rather how much they were willing to pay for their product. And I think at the end of the day, we are investing in teams, not just the technologies, right? So uh, we do a lot of reference checks, especially using our networks, finding out who these entrepreneurs are. Uh, like I mentioned before, it is important to understand the motivations, the vision they have for the company and the commitment to the success of the company. Okay. Not every startup makes it. In fact, most don't, especially in what can be perceived as yet unproven technologies and markets. How do you help your innovative companies grow and scale? So here at Sentinel, the first thing I would say is we invest in companies with clear thesis and real use cases out there because we want to be able to help them commercialize their product to sell into enterprises because that's where our strong suit is. And when we invest, we usually invest with conviction and often than not, we take out of cycle uh, bets. So you wouldn't expect us to have hundreds of companies in our portfolio because we want to spend time with them. We want to actively add value to them using our team's complementary backgrounds, expertise, experiences. So for example, for some of our portfolio companies, we have helped them scale globally, especially into regions like Asia. We have unblocked regulatory hurdles for them and also introduced institutional clients uh, to, to them. At the end of the day, we want to invest for the future, the future state of the market. So Tim O'Reilly, who famously coined the term open source, he once said, an invention has to make sense in the world it finishes in, not the world it started. So that really resonates with us because we want to be investing for the future, investing in products and services that will remain relevant for the times to come. Fast forward 10 years and you and I bump into each other on the street and you'll tell me about your most successful investment and exit. What company would that be? Well, I wished I had that insight and I could predict the future. But what I am more confident uh, highlighting is more of the considerations that make a company viable in the long term and successful for the future. Right. So one of the key things is the team, the founders need to have the right motivations. They need to be able to place the company over their self-interest, even if it means replacing themselves in the future when the company has reached a certain stage of, of growth. And adoption, commercialization are key. They must be able to sell to enterprises, to consumers who want to buy their product. More importantly, they need to, consumers, enterprises need to be willing to pay for those products. And integration into the, the business workflow, consumer habitual patterns, I think that's very important because that will ensure st stickiness and also retention. And efficient use of capital, that's also increasingly important. So $1 of spending should generate $1 of, at least $1 of revenues. That's the basic principles of profitability, right? So I think there's an increasing focus on, on that. And the last thing I would say is the company needs to be committed to innovation. There needs to be a continual investment in that so that they remain ahead of the game because times change, consumer preferences change, and if they don't keep up, they might end up like Alta Vista when Google entered. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.